Hey y'all, I am so excited about today's video because it's about, all about like thrift lips, trash to treasure type thing. I've got five projects that I'm going to be showing you and I've got one fail. But before we get into the womp womp, I wanted to share that on this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Before we get into all the fun and excitement for today's video, I wanted to share that this video is also part of a playlist. It's called the Third Thursday Thrift Flip Open Invite. It's hosted by my friends Elizabeth from Rustic Chicks Design and Tammy from the Rest of Willow, as well as the co-host this month is Lini from Crafty Lini, and I had to insert this little updated um, <laughs> voiceover because I had the wrong name and I didn't want to miss her. So um, there you go. The links to their channels as well as the playlist is going to be in the description box below. I saw this sign at antiquefarmhouse.com and the 12 by 16 was $56 y'all. It looks framed but it's actually a smooth canvas and they just printed it to look like it has a frame. This version from Kirkland's is approximately 17 by 21 and it's made of wood and linen and it's currently on sale for just a little over 26 bucks. If you can find a used canvas drop cloth, that would be sweet because then it would be stained and stuff and, you know, have character or you can do like I did and buy one from somewhere like Walmart for 12 bucks. I used iron on vinyl and there are several things you need to know when using iron on vinyl. First, you might possibly need supervision from either socks or captain, but seriously, you should know if the vinyl you're using is the type that you have to let cool and then you remove the backing sheet or if it's the kind that you remove when warm. I'm not sure, super sure which one I have. And as far as I can tell, there's, there's like the vinyl doesn't tell you in any way either. So. I let mine get cool and just I just hope for the best. <laughs> but also you need to make sure that you mirror the image and that you put the shiny side down when you put the vinyl on your mat. As you can also kind of see, it's really pretty easy to weed. Like you have to really pull up sometimes. It's also good to weed out the inner parts of the letters before pulling up the surrounding part because the backer sheet is pretty sticky and it'll be a tad like annoying to always have to have your hands sticking to the backing sheet. And well, at least it is for me. <laughs> and one thing though is on this particular project, I used the font Misha, Misha Hip Tone, I think it says. Anyway, is because it, of the lines, you know, they're kind of delicate. I actually messed up the vinyl and had to start all over. And I mean, I probably could have just redid the part that was messed up, but I thought it was just easier to chuck it and redo it. But you're going to see what also happens. <sighs> Man, I was really helpful for this one too. I was going to make this kind of like a scroll thing. So I'm just measuring out the paint stir sticks and seeing how or like where I need to cut them. And then I'm going to use one of my I don't know, it's my circular saw. <laughs> I'm going to use that to cut it because I don't want that indented end on there. And so I'm just kind of measuring where I'm going to need to cut it. And then I'm taping it together so I can just make one cut. I am going to stain the sticks with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And I kind of do a mixture of techniques on this. I paint it on and then wipe it off with a scrap damp piece of cloth. And then sometimes I just use the cloth to wipe it on and wipe it off. You know, whatever works. It all comes out pretty much the same and there's a little less to clean up when you use a scrap piece of cloth. So I'm all ready to like, you know, iron on the decal and I do have a Cricut press. It's a big one. I wish I'd gotten a little bit smaller one, but you know, it all works. And I, well, I mean, I don't want the Cricut Joy. I mean, I do want the Cricut Joy, but I didn't want the Cricut Joy for this project. So anyway, I'm pressing down. Um, I don't think I pushed the start button at this point, but it, it's not really going to matter because you'll see what happens next. And I pressed all the way around. And then when I want to pull the backer sheet off, a lot of the, a lot of the little parts of the letters came off, like the end of that H and the S. And it just, you know... It wasn't sticking down. The letters are so delicate, I guess. Maybe they weren't thick enough. Maybe I didn't, I don't know, turn around three times and hop on one foot. I'm not sure. <laughs> it didn't work. And I really, I was excited because it, everything was looking good. It looked like it was really going to work. Oh, well. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I had some scrap pieces of wood and I painted them all black, all, all sides. And then I went back and painted one side white and I used Rosolium chalked Ultramat paint in the color charcoal for the black and linen for the white. I had printed out some images and I tried to, you know, size them down 
You also have to remember to reverse the image or mirror it before printing and I try to cut it down kind of close to the actual image. And on a couple of these I did not and it makes it a little bit harder to work but you know not much and it's it's just easier if you cut it down more and i used mod, po mod podge when i do mine and i added a thin layer and sometimes this takes a little bit of practice to get the right amount but it's not like you have to be super exact or anything just make sure you get the mod podge on all the image and you'll see why in a minute you're gonna flip dip your finger <laughs> flip your fingers you're gonna dip your fingers in some water and then you're gonna kind of start rubbing the paper away and I put enough water on the paper to see that it's wet and then I just kind of start rubbing in a circular motion and if you rub too hard it will take away some of the image so don't get too enthusiastic about it but just kind of keep rubbing and that's pretty much it and this is how they turned out and as you can see, I rubbed a little too hard on the L on silent, or maybe I didn't put enough Mod Podge on that one. And some of the paint kind of wore off around the edge, but I like the rustic look. I like the simple look of it all. And yeah, see walking in a inter wonderland. I mean, you kind of know what it's supposed to say. <laughs> I hadn't done this technique in a long time, and so I just thought I would try it again. I actually seen Tammy from the Rest of Willow do it recently, and I thought, oh, I need to do some of those because I had some extra scrap wood that I'd gotten for free. So anyway, there you have it. That's how they turned out. I got this little sign from Pop Shelf, which I think is part of the Family Dollar family. <laughs> it was on clearance, and I want to say it was like a dollar or something because I thought to myself, this is pretty much what I'd pay a Dollar Tree, so why not? And I just taped off the inner frame with some painter's tape. And I'm painting it with Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramat Paint in the color Charcoal. And I do like the color, but I also wish it were a tad more black. Because, I mean, well, just because, <laughs> just because I do. And, y'all, this has lasted me for forever. And I've really been trying to use up my stash. And I also don't want it to dry out on me and then, you know, go to waste. So, the paint covers really well, and I only had to give it one coat. I was going to, uh, I was going to stencil this on, but I started weeding it the regular way. So then I was like, well, I mean, I guess we're using it as a, as a decal. I mean, I could have redone it and put down a layer of white in the center area and laid down the decal and then painted over it and then remove the decal. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's a lot. And so I just decided to do a decal. And I made the decal with my Cricut. I messed up the second half of it. So I had to remake that part. So, you know, I was remaking. Could have just done the whole thing. But anyway. And that's why I'm piecing it together. And I'm using my favorite paper transfer tape. So that it doesn't pull up any of the paint or anything. When I apply it to the, to the sign. And another thing about paper transfer tape. Or really, I guess, any transfer tape. Y'all, I use and reuse the heck out of it. Not because I can't buy more. But I just think, hey, it's still sticky. So why not reuse it? And this is how it turned out, y'all. It is so cute. I love it. Very simple, but just a really classic touch to my Christmas decor. Now, I got this sign around Easter from the Dollar Tree. In fact, it might be one of the signs that was on clearance. Now, my Dollar Tree doesn't always do clearance, but every now and then, I'll catch that, and it's hard to pass up. <laughs> so, I was using the back, but I really didn't want all the stuff on the other side, so I'm just soaking it with a wet rag to loosen things up. And let the rag sit for a bit, and then I start taking off all of the embellishments. I'm just using that little tool. You know, that little tool bends a little bit easy, but, you know, whatever. I guess I could have used a screwdriver or something. Anyways, I'm just trying to get all this stuff off so it's just not, like, making it bumpy. And once I get them all that stuff removed, I use a sanding block to smooth things down. I actually even take it outside and sand it with my sander thing, but just trying to make it smooth. And I'm using folk art paint in the color linen, but it's a different color linen than the Rust-Oleum linen. Anyway, I'm using that as a base coat and I'm just giving it one coat as I don't necessarily like need to have full coverage on this. I printed out a decal and I'm just using the reverse weeding technique and pulling out all the letters so that I can use it as a stencil. And I used paper transfer tape to apply the transfer to the sun. I mean, this is, this is easy peasy y'all. I used a sponge dauber and what I like to do is sponge on the same color as the base coat color of paint. And that's going to help, you know, the actual color to not bleed as much and give you a crisper stencil. And I'm sorry, I think I used, um, the brown color, uh, territorial beige, <laughs> the beige color. I mean, and I, um, just sponged it on over the linen color. And before the paint dries, I pull the stencil off and then I work on weeding the rest of the pieces out, you know, just like the insides of the letter and stuff like that. It's kind of dry enough where I'm not like, hopefully not smearing it. <laughs> 
And y'all, is this not cute or is this cute? It's cute. I was gonna say, is this not cute or is this not cute, but it's cute. So we don't even have to question it. Anyway, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. And I've got another little thing that's gonna go with this one coming up in, I think my next video. So be on the lookout for that because you'll see this side again. I got this frame from a friend and it had handles on each side. And I wasn't really sure what it was used for because it was just kind of hanging on the wall with the handles and stuff, but it had some skewers nailed into it and some black electrical tape around the back. So I removed all of that and washed it off. And I also took off like the handles too. And then I took some painter sticks and I wasn't sure if I was going to go long ways or up and down, horizontal, vertical, whatever. I ended up doing it this way. And then I needed to cut down the sticks, but that Lowe's one right there, that didn't match the rest of them. So I put that away and I just used the ones that were all the same size. And I'm just kind of laying out to see how many I'm actually going to need. And then again, I am staining these with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. Again, just dipping it in, wiping it on, wiping it off, wax on, wax off. Yeah, that's kind of, it's very easy to do. And I have a little bit of water, you can't see this, but I have a little bit of water off to the side, so I'm thinning it just the tiniest bit, but it does really dry fast, and I just love the color. I decided to paint the frame with rust -Oleum Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color Linen, and I don't know if it's going to stick, y'all, but for now, it's sticking. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how to make it stay, or if I need to just go ahead and start sanding off some of it to make it look distressed a little bit but kind of distressed on my terms. <laughs> so if you guys have any tips or tricks, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so now everything's, I stained those painter sticks and I'm making sure that I'm putting the ruler side because one side has a ruler on it. I'm making sure that that side is facing up towards me because that will be the bottom of this little piece. And I'm just using some wood glue and gluing it down. I may go back and staple it in, but for now, I'm just gluing. It's turning out okay. Then I'm going to show you me gluing it some more. Why? Oh, you know what? I had to cut it down a little bit more because I had measured it, but for some reason the sticks weren't fitting that great. And then these were just sliding in a little too easy, but that's okay. And I'm going to take this time to tell you guys, I have a Facebook group, crafting group. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. Link will be below if you want to join. Share what you're working on. We all want to see it and encourage you and support you on your crafting journey. Anyway, it's turning out really super cute. This is how it looks. I love it. I think I, I just really love it. So there you go. I don't even know what more to say about it. I have not put the handles back on because I was trying to decide if I want to do black handles or maybe like that rub and buff stuff and like a gold handle kind of thing. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for right now, it's a tray. I love it. I think it looks really cute. And I love that I use that linen color and the contrast to the antique wax. I just, I think it looks beautiful. This is the project that was a long time coming because when I lived in my old house over almost five years ago, I had a sign over my map and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But anyway, this is the sign. I'm redoing it. It was from Hobby Lobby. I had to fill in the little grooves because it had some etching in it. And I filled that in with some like joint compound and just made it smooth. I painted the inside white as you saw and I painted the outside with the charcoal gray. Now I'm taking this decal that you ha I had to split it up because it just wouldn't all fit in one thing. And so I thought I had a video showing you guys how I pieced it together, but I guess I don't, but here you can not really see me what I'm doing, but I'm applying the transfer to the sign. I wanted to show y'all kind of like what's going on right here. Not, not the mess, but <laughs> and not socks but i am placing the decal onto the um the sign to kind of see where it's going to go and because the cricket can only cut out so long because i have a cricket uh air explorer 2 i think it only cuts out i think the max is 23 and a half inches and so you kind of have to piece stuff together so in order to do that what I did was I put a period at the end of one part and a period at the beginning of the next word so that way I could 
know where to place it because if I lift this up, there's a period here and there's a period here. So I know I just need to line these up and then that should, that should make it to where it's placed just like I like. When I transfer it, I'll have to be super careful to not transfer this over, of course, because I'm actually going to use those as the exclamation points, the bottoms of the exclamation points, and which it didn't have an exclamation point. I used a Grinch 2.0 font, and it didn't have an explanation point, exclamation point in there. Uh, my allergies are killing me. Anyways, so I just used two letter L's, and then I'm going to use the dot, and that's how I'm going to make that. It, it'll work fine, but that's how it's looking so far. Oh, also, I need a comma right there. They didn't have a comma and a an apostrophe. So that's how it's looking so far. I'm going to use my paper transfer tape to put it all together in one big thing, so that way, you know, we don't have any issues there. And I'm just going to put a small piece of, uh, what do you call it? Parchment paper right there where the, the little dot is. So that way it doesn't lift that up at the time that I'm transferring. So yeah, I'm going to try to measure a little bit. Y'all know I measure with my heart. So uh, that's what I'm going to pretty much do. But I'll kind of use, I don't know, I'll kind of measure to make sure it's pretty much in the center where I want it. So this is part of my craft room area. If you check back with me in January, I'm going to do a craft room tour. Anyway, the sign's going to go right up there. I'm pointing right to where the sign's going to go. And it's going to look great because it says, Oh, the places will go. <laughs> now, I am missing an apostrophe on wheel. I am missing a comma after the word O. Oh. So I do need to add those, but I love how this turned out and I think it's just going to look great on top of my map. And on the map, I put little pins to all the places that we visited. So isn't this cute? I just love it. And I use the font Grinch 2.0 in case you were wondering. Thank y'all so, so much for joining me today. I really do hope that you enjoyed all the crafts that I made today. Let me know which one was your favorite and tell me in the comments below because, you know, I need to know what you guys think about the handles on that tray, for example, and, and what else I should do to, what was the other question I asked you? I don't know, but answer it below. And don't forget, I've got a crafting group. The links to the host channels and the playlist is going to be in the description box. All the goodness is down below in case you want to check it out. And I hope you have an awesome day. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on, on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram, my handle is Ivory House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!